Welcome to Gel Printing July. Today I want to work with um, metallic paints. And uh, the idea that I have in my head is that I want to do something with round shapes. Um, uh, I want to do something with, I think, three round shapes stacked on top that create a focal point. And I all the time I have this word of a medallion in my head. So they're, they're yeah, those round disc-like shapes. So uh, that's what, <laughs> what the plan is for today. And we'll see how it works out. Now I want to create a mask for this. So where I have the openings of these round shapes. And I'm going to do that with just simple printer paper. And since I do want to, um, yeah, I have them more or less centered. I mean, <laughs> my measurements are always off. So um, I, I won't pretend that I will have the perfect centered shapes here, but I will do kind of my best. Uh, so I want to make the mask approximately the same size as my gel plate. All I need is to have a little line here where the edge of my gel plate is. So no, I'm not going to try to be 100% <laughs> exact. But uh, I'm just eyeballing this and that is good enough. Actually, I, I do prefer that because I don't want to to create a look of that a machine created this. I want to have a handmade feel to this as well. So can I tear this? So if some of my measurements are a bit off, then that is actually not, then that actually adds a bit of this handmade feel. Let me take scissors. <laughs> So this is kind of the work area and now I'm just going to create a center line so that I know where I want my circles to have the center. Now I plan to work with some of these um, wood block, uh, wood blocks that I have. I'm not sure yet which ones. But yeah, I think that the circles need to be a bit, yeah, about this size or maybe a little bit bigger. I don't want them all to be the exact same size. If you don't have wood blocks, then you can definitely also just try a normal stamp. Those should work too. Now I have my compass. Let me see. So this would be approximately this size. Maybe it's still a little bit small. One of them could be, or the outer two could be this size and then the center one maybe bigger. Let me also, yeah, let's try to do that. Let me also create the center line here <laughs> so that I have the center of my work area. Yeah, I think I'm going to do the biggest one in the center. I always need to balance my uh, longing for precision and control. Balance that with my um, characteristic of being very impatient. <laughs> now I'm going to cut this out by hand. So I already know that this will not be a very complete, scientifically correct circle. There will be lumps and bumps and I'm totally okay with that. There we go. That's my first lump and bump. I just hope that the bump won't be too much though. Although that could of course also be kind of interesting. And I'm saving these circles because I may want to use them as a mask as well. I'm not sure yet. So now I'm going to do my best 
to place this <laughs> as centered as I can on my gel plate, which will not be possible. <laughs> <laughs> well, as centered as possible. That's that's a good uh, addition because making it exactly centered is not possible. And sometimes people ask me how I make this stick to the gel plate, but the gel plate kind of has this anti-slip property, so it grabs uh, the paper or a stencil like this. So that's really fun. Now, there are lots of options for metallic paints uh, in all kinds of colors like copper or more cooler colors like silver or whatever colors or color shift colors. I am going to go for this uh, bronze and uh, I think it could look really nice. And I think, but I'll see that uh, later. I think that I want to go with a red, reddish kind of background outside of these medallion shapes. So, let's see, I'm just going one by one, I think. So this is a, a golden fluid paint. It's a little bit more fluid than regular paints. And I don't want it to be this thick as I have it now. So I have some scrap paper here to the side so I can roll off my brayer. And now I'll get my wood block and I'll try not to get my head in the way, but I need to see where I place it. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but from here it looks really nice, actually. Now the other one. Ooh. Again, too much paint. <laughs> I think I'm going to go with the same wood block as the top one. I will give it a little bit of an idea of um, symmetry. Let me see. I don't want to get the paint here. So that's actually why I saved those circles. Although, of course, it's not such a big deal because I'm going to use this same paint. But I can use this one. And I don't want this to dry. So even though I had too much paint, <laughs> I'm now going to add some more paint. Let's do another try here. And I don't know what happened here. <laughs> but I'll clean that up in a moment. There we go. It's, uh, yeah, it's not completely in the center of this circle and I'm totally okay with that. <laughs> Otherwise I would make my life very complicated, right? Okay, now let's remove this mask. And if you are working a bit faster than I do here, you could also just add the paint to all three and then add your stamps or your wood blocks right away. I think I'm going to use this one for here, even though it doesn't fit exactly. I just want to see what it looks like. It's nice. Here I missed it. You can see that. Now I should not do this. Let me just use the tip here. Just to create a bit of texture there as well. I'm not sure if I also want to get some texture outside. Let's see what it looks like here. And of course, it's not, <laughs> it's not completely vertical. Oh, well. I 
think I may want to add a little bit of texture there as well. Hmm. I could use this one just to go around like that. Or I could use this one and let that come back, but it will be hard here. <laughs> Let's not do that. <laughs> well, this is going to start to dry, so I have to decide. <laughs> Or the paint will decide for me. Let's see if I can use this lid of my uh, knife that I just used. Now I can remove my mask. Oh, this looks really cool actually. I'm really liking this. All right, now what I am planning, what I want to do, or try, is to work with my matte acrylic paint for the, um, for the background, because it could be an interesting contrast between the, the metallic and then a matte, um, yeah, textured uh, background. So I'm going for a dark color. I'm going to use one of my favorites, Purple Matter Oblique Acrylics. And I think that it would be nice to have some dark here behind the medallion as well. So with this technique, you, you work from the front to the back layers because we're going to place it down and then print. And I think but I'm not 100% sure. I think it could be nice to have a darker background here behind so that there's a contrast. I think that could look really good, but for now I think I'm going to stay on the same safe side. So uh, because there's also a possibility that the uh, metallic will kind of disappear on top of the purple matter dark color and I don't want that so I could do that for another time and test it out but for now I think I'm going to keep it safe and I'm just going to cover my medallions and then add my purple matter paint so I'm going to cover these now I'm not going to adhere them very well because I don't want the paint to be removed. So there's a little bit of a risk that that happens. If I remove, maybe I should turn it upside down. So I really only want the outer edges to stick so that the purple matter paint won't seep underneath the paper. But I don't want the paper to pull off the metallic paint. So that's a bit of a tricky thing that I'm doing here. I'm not sure if this is going to work. I haven't tested it or anything. I'm just going to, I'm just doing this together with you. And maybe this is not even the, the most eff, eff, efficient or effective way to do this. But, but if that is the case, then uh, <laughs> we'll find out together. And I'm going to play with water. So I can get an interesting texture here and I don't want to have too much paint here so let's see how much we need. I hope I can remove <laughs> my paper <laughs> without damaging the medallions. Ooh, that is <laughs> uh, well, sometimes you have to take a risk, right? Although sometimes you don't. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see which which was the case for today. Let me add 
some water. I hope I can get this paint to move. Okay, um, this red paint needs to dry, but I think I'm going to remove my circles because I don't want them to stick to my metallic. Fingers crossed that this is going well. Ooh, yes. Good, there's no metallic there. Let's see how it looks now from this side. I'm still not sure, I'm still tempted maybe to add some uh, dark paint also underneath the metallic. I have to think of that. Let me first, uh, I'll, I'll dry this, I'll clean up a little bit and I will think what I want to do. And then uh, I'll come back. Okay, so I do think that I want to add some darker color uh, here behind my medallions. But I don't know how it's going to <laughs> look. So it's it definitely, yeah, a risk. But uh, let's just go for it. I think I'm going to work with a brush and I might even use a few colors, but I'm just going to start with this dark color. That's a color I mixed and I will add in the description the paints that I used to create this. I don't think I need much, but I can al always add more, of course. And let me get some uh, matte medium. It doesn't have to be matte, it could be shiny as well. Just to thin it down a little bit and make it easily, that it flows easily. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know. Nah, I should go in a circle, but I don't want my head to be in front of the camera, so maybe I'll just go with straight lines. And you can see that I'm already not following the exact contours. And what I also don't know if I, if I am now removing my metallic paint, but I don't think I am. I don't know if these brush marks will show up. I'll have a look in a second. Yeah, I do think it's way better that I added the dark color. But since I'm not staying within the exact contour, maybe I will just add some outside of the circle because I'm kind of liking that look. So I'll just go deliberately outside here. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, I think I'm loving this. So I'm going to uh, work a bit more with, um, with my dark paint. I'm going to add it also here to the edge so it, it unifies it a bit. And this will be a bit of a longer process, so I will just skip ahead every now and then so that I'm not going to bore you <laughs> with it. Oh yes, I think this is great. Maybe I'm going for a larger size watercolor paper. This is A3, so that I really get that edge around it. Oh yeah, I think I'm going to do this today. Because I really do love, uh, yeah, if, the, if there's quite a big edge of paper around it, it gives a bit of a rich 
image, I think. So this is uh, A3. And then let me just show it this way so you can see it better. And then I'm going to print it like that. But uh, yeah, the image is meant to be a vertical direction. Okay. And I'm going to let this dry. Then uh, I will make everything ready to take the print. Okay, so this uh, needs to dry and then uh, I'll come back to pull the print. Okay, let's see how this went. Okay, there we are. Wow. Oh, this looks way better than what I expected from what I saw on the plate. This is really cool. So I would turn it this way, but I love, uh, so that's why I'm showing it to you. I love the whole big edge of the watercolor paper. It really gives it a beautiful, luxurious print like feel like, uh, yeah, it's an artwork, but it's really beautiful. And I love here the, the glazing that gives it depth. I'm really happy that I added the dark color behind the medallions. I also really like the texture here of the background. So <laughs> I'm really kind of surprised because uh, I I thought it well I, I I didn't see this on the on the gel plate. And of course I could have done much more testing before I created this actual print. Um, I could have tested out the combination of colors and everything. Also the paper, of course. And I am an art teacher, so for my <laughs> classes I would definitely do that. But here on YouTube, I am not teaching. I am taking you with me on, on my own journey here in my studio, showing you what I'm doing, what I'm... Uh, having fun with at the moment, what I'm exploring and so on. So uh, <laughs> it could have gone always, but uh, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Next time, I think I would make the edges of this glazing even a bit more softer. I think I would do that. But yeah, I'm, I'm re I really love how this turned out. I'm not sure if you can see the beautiful metallic look of these medallions. It's always a bit hard to show that on the video and even harder to show it on an image. But uh, here in real life it looks really great. So uh, I definitely encourage you to try this out because uh, I, I love this, uh, this look. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video and uh, coming along with me on this uh, adventure of today. Uh, if you did, please give this video a thumbs up. If you want to see more of my videos, be sure to subscribe. And uh, if you'd like to learn more about uh, gel printing, check out my in-depth gel print fundamentals series on Patreon, because there I'm really going in-depth and sharing a lot of uh, both beginner knowledge and more advanced uh, tips and techniques and so on. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching this. Maybe you uh, are inspired now to do something similar like I did here. And uh, I uh, will see you back tomorrow with another video. Mm -hmm.